Good chance you've probably seen some of the footage from Mike Pence's recent visit to a hospital. Here he is, and I want you to notice not what's there, but what's missing. So, uh, that's Mike Pence, the guy that I think is still technically in charge of the entire thing, the entire response, not wearing a mask at the Mayo Clinic, even though they later clarified and then deleted the tweet that they had asked him to do it, and he declined to do so. Everyone else there being very responsible, wearing uh, personal protective equipment. Mike Pence, not interested, not doing it. So, first of all, uh, uh, newsflash, um, if you delete a tweet, you should probably explain why you did because everyone knows you deleted the tweet. Just heads up for anybody out there. If you delete a tweet, you're gonna have to go and explain because people say, oh, I'm gonna come up with a reason why and that's gonna be the narrative. So um, so when you say he went in there and he denied putting it on, you might as well leave it up because that's obviously what happened. Um, so in this case, I'm not sure if the, the outrage is about him going in there without a mask because he's surrounded by folks who uh, potentially have it or are suffering from it or are trying to get over it and he could be infected or vice versa because the first thing I thought was hey bro if you walk around like this in the Mayo Clinic with no mask on where else are you going around with no mask who else are you interacting with with no mask yep. and now there's vulnerable people around you and what are you who are you passing this on to this has been the conservative approach to this the whole time every time someone says hey you know um, you can be asymptomatic and still carry it still have it still spread it yeah they go, oh my God, really? This is new to me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's like Brian Kemp. He's like, he's just figuring out stuff about it now. <laughs> um, well, look, he, he was asked about this. So I'm going to give him a chance to respond before I give my thoughts. Uh, here is Mike Pence. Well, let me say, um, as Vice President of the United States, I'm tested for the coronavirus on a regular basis. And everyone who is around me is tested for the coronavirus. And when the CDC issued guidelines about wearing a mask, it was their recognition that people that may have the coronavirus um, could prevent the possibility of conveying uh, the virus to someone else by wearing a mask. And since I, I don't have the coronavirus, I, I thought it'd be a good opportunity for me to be here, to be able to speak to these researchers, these incredible healthcare personnel, and look them in the eye and, and say thank you. Yeah, would, would, have been, would have been tough to look them in the eye with that mask that covers your Also, um, let's keep it real. And keep not it real. your eyes. Keep it real. So what did, what did his appearance, sorry, John, you haven't got to the point yet. What is his appearance at the Mayo Clinic in that day have to do with his approach and his um, tackling of this task force enforcing of the coronavirus? What is his reason for being there outside of a photo op and for political uh, reasoning? Yeah. Again, if you talk and speak to everyone, you can go around and do all this. You just want to look them in the eye. That's the reason you just want to look them in the eye. Or did you want the camera to see you looking them in the eye yep. while you're at the Mayo Clinic? Just the keep the it thing real. is, like, I'm not, I'm not opposed to, I'm not opposed to like photo ops. Like they can, they can do it if they're being responsible. Put on the mask, go there, take some photos. But they can't do that. Okay, he could. Like, and by the way, I saw someone in the chat said the the Mayo Clinic should have denied him access without wearing the mask. Hundred percent right. They yep. should have blocked him. I understand why they didn't. But like, I would get thrown in L.A. I would get thrown out of a convenience store if I wasn't wearing a mask. Yes. He goes in to a hospital, and it just it reminded me like a like of a little kid. Well, here's all the reasons why. Clearly, I could never have it, and I don't need to work. Just put it on. Stop with your stupid little evasive excuses and put on the mask because you still could have talked to them. You still could have done your photo op. I don't want you contributing to people trying to come up with reasons why they don't need to have it because I'm feeling fine because I don't have a fever because I haven't been around people. There's plenty of reasons why I don't need to wear one. Every American is looking for excuses to not have to abide by the same regulations that everyone else does. That is the core thing at the center of our being as Americans. They don't need to be encouraged in that. And they have been so far from the very beginning. Do you remember this? When Trump says that CDC recommends masks, but he won't wear one and he will not saying, I mean, I can't be meeting with like foreign heads of state wearing a mask. I think it'd be a great idea, especially when visiting with uh, visitors from other countries to not be wearing a mask. 
This is not about the protection that they have or the testing that they've already done. This is another example of how stupid and dumb and weak conservative masculinity is. They think it looks weak to wear a mask and so they refuse to do so, even though that leads to a higher chance that they will get a disease that could kill them. It is dumb, dumb, dumb. That's what makes it conservative masculinity. Ask me if they'll go hang out with Boris Johnson in his face uh, mm -hmm. and share forks and spoons with him. See if they'll share a straw with him since this is all great. So Mike Pence, uh, by the way, also revealed one other thing, which we knew already, but um, he goes, I'm not worried about it. I'm the effing vice president of the United States. You know what I can do? I can get tested every day. By the way, that's one of the problems that we've got is that everyone can't. So when you go and flaunt your privilege and you're like, you know who I am? I can get a test every day. Like you don't realize how you're pushing that in people's faces who are desperate for a test because they don't know what's happening. Or they've got a family member that is sick and they can't get a test. And like, man, it's pretty obvious of what's going on here, but I can't do anything about it. And you go and flaunt. Here's my excuse for not wearing a mask is because I'm the pre vice president. I can do what I want. I've got access to things that you don't have access to. No, that wasn't his energy in saying that. But you got to think about how you come off. Yeah. You got to know the situation and know how you look in in conveying it. It's a problem, bro. You got to start connecting. It's this is this is what out of touch looks like. It, exactly. And uh, I want to just briefly give credit to one of the people who uh, most forcefully called out why Mike Pence shouldn't have, from the very beginning, shouldn't have been involved in this effort, considering his own record in his own state on uh, matters of healthcare and disease. Uh, AOC tweeted uh, in response to this video, when I warned everybody in February that Pence doesn't believe in science and shouldn't be in charge of COVID <laughs> response, I meant it. But I admit, I did not have VP visits COVID patients without wearing a mask on my bingo board. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I didn't have inject yourself with bleach either, man. Every day is a wake-up call. It's like the damage report, but honestly, it should be the mental damage report because that is what we're reporting on, is insane news that shouldn't exist. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.